Hello everyone, how are you? Have you heard the term pre-commissioning, static commissioning, dry commissioning, wet commissioning, dynamic commissioning? How come there are six terms for this commissioning thing? This video is on commissioning in startup of processing plant. In this video, I will take you through why commissioning in startup is not as simple as one might think. I will touch on the definitions some key concepts and the big picture of commissioning in startup. By the way, I'm in the process of developing individual videos where I will discuss in more details on how to commission and start up mechanical piping equipment, electrical and instrumentation for your next project. If you have not been, if you have not been part of commissioning in startup before, this video is for you. It will provide you with a glimpse of the challenges, surprises that awaits any commissioning team. So let's get started. So key points to remember. For the starter, commissioning and startup is neither construction nor operation. If operations team have not done major new construction commissioning in the past, chances are they will struggle during the commissioning phase without external support. The number of tagged equipment usually indicates the size, complexity, and duration of commissioning effort. Bulk construction, usually done in geographic area to maximize crew productivity. Commissioning, on the other hand, and takes place based on systems that may or may not cross geographic boundaries. Now, you may ask the question, what is a system? I'll touch on that. Many times, commissioning planning does not start until detail engineering or worse during construction phase, which is often too, too late. By the time you finish this video, you will know why. Equipment preservation is key component of commissioning startup facilities. And hopefully you will understand why as well during this video. Commissioning process has two main purpose. Number one, it transfers assets from bulk construction to continuous operation through progressive inspection and testing. Let me repeat, it transfers assets that you just built from bulk construction to continuous operation through progressive inspection and testing. Its second purpose is to that commissioning actually drives system priority, which ultimately drives bulk construction sequence and scheduling which basically drives design, engineering, and procurement activities. So without fully comprehending that how you want to commission, you will not be able to come up with the right schedule for your project. You will not be able to identify which equipment you need to buy first, then second or third. You will not be able to sequence which area to focus your construction effort first. So there will be lots of problem without fully understanding or at least understanding at a level that allows you to do those activities. Uh, the commissioning activities. So, very important. Uh, let's remember that. Let us take a quick example to clarify some points. What is a system? How bulk construction is different from commissioning startup activities? Okay, look around your house. You will notice you have electricity, hot water, hot water, natural gas for the most part. Let's stop there. You can think of a system, each one of them as a system. For example, natural gas is one system, room temperature water is one system, hot water is another system, as well as electricity can be thought of as a separate system. If you notice during construction, you may have electrical as well as pipe fitting crew working in the same geographic area. But as you approach 40 to 60% of your bulk construction, you will notice if you have good execution plan that included solid commissioning strategy, the crew will transition into system-based approach. Let me repeat, at the start, it was bulk construction based on area that is geographically constrained. As you go over 50% progress or somewhere around there, chances are you will start focusing on more on how to complete each system, even if the system, for example, water line goes all the way from your basement to the second floor to your washroom. This allows to validate the system end to end is fit for commodity introduction. That commodity could be your water, that commodity could be your electrical power, and so on. Think from this angle, your light in your bedroom, 
is not going to work if a cable is missing between your lighting fixture and your source. A good commissioning plan provides sequence of systems that needs to be commissioned one after the other. That this drives bulk construction priority. This is important. In major construction projects, you will notice that, that uh, the first thing that is needed is power. The second thing that is needed is usually utility, such as instrumentia, natural gas, etc. This is needed so that you don't need to bring tons of generators or other temporary equipment, or, which is known as temporaries, to test commission your equipment. If you are in cold climate, you may also have natural gas provided to your process buildings so that you can turn on your HVAC system. You will need natural gas electricity so that you can have your process buildings powered up, heated up, so that other disciplines can get in and do their job properly. Remember, otherwise you will end up with tons of temporaries, gensets, heaters, and so on. It will not be fun. You will spend tons of dollars on rental equipment and it makes almost, if not, no sense. So with that understanding, let's move to the next phase of this session so that is why you need to think about commissioning as you start your front-end engineering many project team ignores commissioning and planning commissioning and startup until it's too late until it's in construction phase that does not allow you to properly plan properly sequence your overall project they miss that point so I'm trying to highlight that point is that commissioning actually drives your overall sequence of project. Design, engineering, procurement, construction, which area to focus for your construction and so on. So it's very important that you understand that point. When you understand and when you catch on that point, then you can think that, okay, now we need to really plan out the commissioning first because that will drive your overall project sequencing and success at the end of the day. Otherwise, you will end up like many others. Uh, they start commission planning at the, very late. They end up with changes, they end up with delays, they end up with cost increases. And my goal with this video, hopefully now you know, you will not end up in that boat. So in the final segment of this video, I will clarify the some of the interesting terms that's out there when it comes to dry commissioning, pre-commissioning and static commissioning. For the purpose of practicality, think of that those three as the same thing. Pre-commissioning, static commissioning and dry commissioning, pretty much the same thing. When it comes to wet commissioning, dynamic commissioning or commissioning, think of them from a practical standpoint as commissioning. In some projects, you will notice commissioning has a separate is separate from startup activity. We will touch on that. But in many projects, you will also notice commissioning or wet commissioning is actual startup of your facility. I will end this video with some examples. Again, this is not any way an exhaustive list of some of the activities that actually happens during each phase, mainly pre static dry. That's one phase and wet dynamic commissioning. That's another phase or startup. That's another phase so that you have some examples as to what actually goes on in those phases. So for the starter, in pre-commissioning, which is also known as static commissioning or dry commissioning, individual components are energized uh, and tested. It usually single discipline, this is a single discipline, let's say you only have uh, motor solo runs, so it's a single discipline, you want to make sure that the motor runs in the right direction. Uh, you are not, the motor and the pump is decoupled in this stage. Uh, you also check your cause and effect so you will have to upload your program if you have any program uh, for example plc program or uh, the program that will allow you to have a functional uh, plant at the end of the day you have to upload the program that is needed for those individual components it may also involve loop checks some people confuse loop checks with point to point they are two different things so for loop checks what is the loop check very quickly, this is not a loop check video, so I'll, I'll try to explain it very simply, is if you're not familiar with what is a loop check, loop check is to verify that your communication can take place between your instrument in the field, analyzer, and your PLC program, or the program that you have for your, uh, for your facility. Uh, 
Um, so that is, by the way, the last thing that I want to point out is the heat trace and energization during pre-commissioning, dry commissioning or static commissioning. You want to energize your heat trace because you want to make sure that your heat trace works. Uh, you have heat trace most likely because you are in cold climate like in Canada. Okay, so commissioning is also, now we will move to the next phase. So we have just talked about pre-static dry. Now move into commissioning. So there's no pre anymore. Static becomes dynamic and dry becomes wet. So commissioning, wet commissioning or dynamic commissioning. I did not invent the term, so I don't know exactly why. If you know why those terms are there, please comment so that I can learn something new from you. So depending on your project or company rules, you may be able to introduce commodity during wet commissioning. In other facilities, especially in major multi-billion dollar construction projects, you may end up with a separate standalone commissioning or wet commissioning phase and very separate startup phase. And the reason they are separate is because uh, you will notice during uh, major multi-billion dollar projects, obviously you have uh, high cost equipment. So you want to make sure that your equipment actually can handle the truth, uh, if I may put it that way, uh, for before you introduce an actual commodity. So what really happens is that you will turn on your machineries. For example, if you have a pump, you can have your pump pumping with inert product. Sometimes it can be your nitrogen or uh, in, if a situation allows, it can also be water or other, other, other commodity as well. I have also seen, especially in oil and gas sector, to run facilities using diesel. Again, it could be different for different facility depending on what type of equipment you are trying to uh, wet commission. You may also do specialized cleanup. For example, chemical cleanup. You may also uh, introduce catalyst or chemical in your facilities uh, that is needed you will load them uh, during startup obviously which is also can be as i mentioned can be wet commissioning itself you start up your facility with the commodity that you have to start it up by the way you have to do it you should have proper procedure for starting it up and you need to sink commodity and as well as you also have to take into account uh, that uh, if your facility operations team and especially in a brownfield environment, if our operations teams do not commission facilities from time to time, you have to provide support and make sure if you are a PM, CM or project engineer, you have to make sure that you include that funding for commissioning spares, any punch items that will be identified during commissioning startup that it's included in your budget so that you can fund and you can work those items through. Many times I have seen that project teams miss out. They think that commissioning in a smaller environment is operations activity and they do not have any budget left for supporting or identifying or, cap or uh, fixing any of the punch or punches, punch list items. Um, so make sure that your project is not one of those and it includes uh, the funding based on your experience and knowledge as to what could go wrong and uh, what you may need to fix. In multi-billion dollar project, on the other hand, I have seen that there are teams already in place who goes out there, who is, who is in place in order to fix or address any problem or any issues that may arise in the facility. So long story short, uh, Please budget for your wet commissioning, pre-commissioning, as well as your startup activity. You also have to have proper team in place, as I said. If your construction team is not familiar with commissioning or your operation team is not familiar with commissioning, more often than not, you will notice that there's a commissioning team in your organization. If that is not the case, make sure you, as a PM, come up with a commissioning team that takes into account some experience from operation, has experience from construction, and blend those two in in order to address some of the surprises, some of the challenges that may you may face during commissioning. One of the challenges that uh, I have faced uh, my, in my personal life is that you, uh, there, because of the surge in the system, you may find that the line is, uh, 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 the, some of the equipment may not work out exactly the way you think during normal operation. But at the end of the day, once things stabilizes, it will work out just fine. So you have to have that experience and knowledge at your background as part of a background that uh, you can handle that uh, that anxiety or that surprising uh, look uh, on many people's face during commissioning activity. Uh, last thing I want to point out is um, uh, project teams sometimes miss out the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, during commissioning they need to recheck. 
even though like I touched on one item that preservation is part of commissioning a startup. And the reason I touched on that is that sometimes if your project is like, let's say one and a half year long, like your construction phase was one and a half year long, in that case, and you are commissioning a system maybe in that like 15 month time frame, like after one and a half year, let's say this is one of your first system that you're commissioning. Project team sometimes miss out, especially commissioning team or operation they miss out that uh, they have not went through proper cleaning of their piping. They have not went through proper preservation of their uh, rotating equipment or other equipment for that matter. So make sure you, even if that is turned over like mechanically complete and you, you took possession of that equipment, you have to make sure that that equipment is preserved according to the specification of its uh, original equipment manufacturer so that it functions when you will turn it on uh, during commissioning uh, and startup phase. So that's why preservation is a key component. Uh, it may not be so important or so, uh, may not uh, be given so much attention uh, during the uh, design as well as during construction phase, but make sure mean, uh, you better know that it's important if you are equipment, if you are not preserving your equipment properly, you will end up with tons of grief at the end of the day. Uh, that's all for now. I will come up with another, uh, as I mentioned, multiple videos, especially for uh, at least two or three videos uh, for mechanical piping, equipment commissioning and electrical instrumentation commissioning and how to do, uh, how, what to look for, uh, for uh, when you do your commissioning planning or commissioning in startup for your next project. Have a good one.